Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Ham Nation is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Ham Nation is brought to you by ICOM. For more information, visit icomamerica.com slash ham nation. This is Ham Nation, episode number 89, March 13th, 2013. George received Dayton's Special Achievement Award. Good evening, everybody. It's another very special Ham Nation. I'm Bob Heil, K9EID, and we are really going to have some great news, a great program, and uh, of course, you're going to get to see and hear George after a while with his smoke and solder. And uh, Don's going to be here to read the news. Amanda is here, and uh, she's got some big news. And, of course, Cheryl's watching and uh, answering the chat room. So uh, be sure you uh, stay tuned for all of this uh, wonderful stuff. But let's first go down to Costa Mesa. Gordo, how are you? You everything okay? We are here, and we're so excited because the Dayton Hamvention is just right around the corner, May 17, 18, and 19. And we're looking forward to seeing all of our Ham Nation folks show up at our 100th anniversary booth, thanks to Hamvention in uh, Ohio. So May 17, 18, and 19, that's a pilgrimage to Dayton. And um, also going to be at the Dayton Dayton Hamvention is Radio Club of America. And you know, we've talked about Radio Club of America before. They're big on youth. And the Carol Perry WB2MGP Youth Activities Program at RCA is big. Friday at the Dayton Hamvention is the Youth Instructors Forum. For us oldies that are teaching kids all about ham radio, lots of giveaways for instructors to better teach ham radio in the classroom. And then on Saturday, all morning, 9.15 to 12.15, is our big youth ham get-together for youth activities right there at the Dayton Convention. And we're going to have some stipends for those youth presenting some stipends, sorry about that, stipends for those youths presenting uh, ham radio topics at uh, Dayton. And also the young ham lends a hand, one of those will earn a hundred bucks. So if you've got some kids that want to get involved with a Dayton hamvention, get a hold of me, Gordo, WB6NOA at ARRL.net, and we'll get you tuned into Radio Club of America, where their youth activities program is... Uh, Ready for kids. Now, before we get started, um, George wanted me to show off a uh, soldering iron and some soldering techniques. So we've got something very special. And let me get, first of all, we always put on our safety glasses before soldering. You always want to tin the end of the soldering iron. And this is a big 325. Yeah, we'll get that up to a, uh, a boil here. And then we apply it. And then we all have to sing loud and clear for George. Happy birthday to you. Birthday to happy you. birthday happy to birthday you. Happy birthday to you. And happy, happy birthday, birthday, dear George. George. Happy birthday, birthday to you. So, Bob, back <laughs> to you and George. Hey, George, it's your birthday. And um, I, instead of firing up the pipe organ, we thought we'd fire up the real pipes uh, of Gordon and I. And I know you appreciate that awful singing, but the meaning is the same. Happy birthday, man. Oh, thanks, Bob and, and Gordo. If you're seeing a flame come off the end of your soldering gun, it's probably too <laughs> hot, though. <laughs> Well, you know how it is. You never know, boy, when you got the solder flowing, you sometimes got to watch all those other things. Well, that's just great. We uh, we want to wish you a great happy birthday. And are you having a good birthday today? I am so far. And, uh, of course, you know, we got the show tonight. So what else could you want? But, yeah, uh, <laughs> a good time here. And uh, 
busy week. You know, I'm getting ready to go to Giga Parks this weekend, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I've got a good segment coming up a little later in the show here, too. Well, I'm uh, I'm jealous that I don't get to go to Giga Parts with you because I wanted to be there bad, but we got so much going on. So you have fun and uh, bring us back some video and some stories and tell everybody hello, okay? I will do that. Good, good. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, Gordon, um, you know we've been talking about the Dayton Hamvention for what? three, four weeks or more here on <laughs> Ham Nation. You and I love That's Ham right. Nation. I've been, I've been going since 1959. Wow. Uh, I, and I, I have been showing our products in the same space since 1980. And uh, we've been such a fixture there. The Dara Club named that hallway we're in, Audio Alley, and we have all the audio guys in there, uh, Julius Jones, W2IHY, Time Wave, and all that. And it's just such a great thing. But this year, they are again uh, giving a booth to Ham Nation, and we're going to transmit up to Leo's uh Twitch show, you know, his tech guy on Saturday where he talks to 160 radio stations, We're talking over a million people are going to get to see you, George and I, on the floor of Dayton. That's exciting, isn't it? Didn't we have fun last time? Well, we did. We all had our tuxedos. And yes, we're going to have tuxedos again this time, but slightly different shirts, slightly different bow ties and our tradition, <laughs> shorts. You got it. You got it. Well, we're really excited. And one of the guys that makes the Dayton Hamvention go is Michael Calter. And uh, Michael is uh, here on board with us, and I think he might have a little bit more information about this year's Ham Nation. Michael, how are you? WHCI from K9EID. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here with such a company and uh, looking forward to uh, making an announcement here shortly but li looking more forward to Hamvention and and everybody gathering again for another great uh, year well we appreciate all you do for amateur radio I mean amateur radio is built around the ham and the, the ham the whole ham radio activities that occur during that week it's not just a few days but the whole week of dayton and uh, all of us appreciate what you and the 600 members of the dara club do to keep that going so um, what kind of news have you brought us you got uh, anything happening that we need to know about the platform is yours michael what i'd like to do is announce on your show the winners are four winners of the of uh, the awards that we always give out at Hamvention. That's the Club of the Year, the Technical Excellence Award, the Special Achievement Award, and the Amateur of the Year. So I'm going to go down through those. But first, I want to say a word about Hamvention, just so that folks know it's uh, all 100% volunteer activity. You know, from the general chairman to all the volunteers. We do pay, we do rent the building, and we rent and, and lease, uh, you know, emergency services and things like that. But it's a, it's a wonderful event, and I can't speak enough for the volunteers from all over the world that come over to help Ambition. So with that, are you ready to hear some of the winners? We are. We are, and it's, we are. Let's have it. All right. All right. The club of the year is Whiskey 4 Hotel Alpha whiskey and they are the West Palm Beach amateur radio group they were founded in 1939 they do uh, they do so many things right so many facets of what they do and I will tell you it is very difficult to choose a winner from all the all the uh, applications that we get but this club really rose to the top and um, I think that a couple of things have really caught our attention of course, they conducted a, an ARIS, uh, ARISS uh, event that involved 250,000 students in Florida. But even more important than that, what they do seven days a week to reach out to the youth and people in the community in uh, the South Florida Museum, they have people there seven days a week and they have a, a radio station and they give demonstrations and they do a lot of work there. So uh, Dayton Hamvention is proud to announce the West Palm Beach Amateur Radio Group as winner of Club of the Year. 
All right. All right. All right. I'm going to move on to uh, technical excellence. And that's a shared award this year. And many of the the digital folks will will know this, the pre-DV program. And uh, that is uh, Dave Witten, um, KG0, Echo Alpha Golf, and David Rowe from Australia, uh, Victor Kilo 5, Delta Golf Romeo. And they have a, an excellent uh, free DV program that encodes high quality HF uh, digital voice to uh, in 1.125 kilohertz bandwidth. That's less than half the bandwidth, bandwidth of a single sideband. Uh, Roe has also won an award for, for his uh, Codec program as the ARRL Tech Award for 2012. But their work together and to make this all free for amateur radio operators is, in our opinion, rose to the top this year of all our um, applications. So that is our Technical Excellence Award. And are you ready for special achievement? We are. We got it. But we are. All right. The special achievement is a, a relatively unknown amateur radio operator. Call sign uh, Whiskey 5, Juliet Delta X-Ray. He has a hey. radio, or excuse me, he has hey, a... Hey, guys. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> cool. Oh, my. Congratulations, George. Holy yeah. smokos. It's your birthday. Oh, yeah. What a, what a present. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, George, you, you, uh, you had some pretty tough competition out there, but uh, when all the judges looked at your body of work and what you've done, they were very impressed, and you you touched literally thousands of amateur radio operators all over the world, and that's one of the things we look at, and you do it in a very personable, personable way, and uh, I will tell you, I had a, a little talk with George um, and I don't think he shared with you that he won this award. We were trying to keep things secret. But uh, George uh, and I were talking about when we were kids. And I built, I remember building uh, shortwave radios, and particularly a, a night kit R55A. And it was summertime, and I had my uh, shorts on. And so I, I dropped solder on the top of my legs, and I had these solder uh, <laughs> scars there. But he said, oh, that's, he said, that's nothing. He, he, he said, that's nothing. You know, I knelt down on a hot soldering iron when I was a kid. <laughs> so, you know, George, congrats- congratulations, George. I mean, the work you do and the time you must put into this, it's just, we, so many people appreciate it. And the committee, uh, the awards committee definitely appreciated it. Appreciate your work and what you do. You, you guys, all of you, and George, you're taking this to a new level. So, uh, Ham mentioned, and Dayton Amateur Radio Association, you guys ran, you raised, came to the top, George. So congratulations and happy birthday, by the way. Well, thanks, Michael. <laughs> and you know, I I couldn't do this without my partners in there, uh, Tommy and Jimmy and Peter, and of course uh, Bob and Gordo. So, uh, gee, thanks. I, I had no idea this was coming until you called the other night. Wow. That's great. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have a clue. I really didn't. And uh, I'm so thrilled. And 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 I appreciate uh, the Dayton Club for for, of course, honoring George, and and his his really his whole team there. Uh, those guys do great with Amateur Logic, and we are so thrilled to have him here on Ham Nation the past year and a half. It's it's a big part of this show. So, Michael, thank you very much for honoring one of the greats in amateur radio. Right, and um, you know, we're pleased to do that. Um, also, we'd like to, I'd like to announce our Amateur of the Year. And uh, our amateur of the year this year is Mustafa Landolzi, a Delta Lima One Bravo Delta Foxtrot. And he's a, a captain with uh, the Lufthansa, Lufthansa Airlines in Germany. He speaks four languages fluently. He was actually uh, born in Tunisia and has set up uh, six radio stations in Tunisia and amateur radio. He's brought them into the IARU. He's, he's worked uh, tirelessly to help Middle Eastern countries, African countries in amateur radio. He uh, also set up a, um, 
and organize the delivery of emergency medical equipment, emergency medicine uh, in Africa and other third world countries. He is, um, uh, there is a, a museum in northern uh, Germany, and I, forgive me, I, I think I might get the name wrong. I think it's, it's a funk techniques uh, museum, and he is the uh, president of that, founded it. It was a, had been deserted, a radio, uh, a radio spot, uh, and he's brought that back to life. And he is so well known throughout uh, the world, and his work um, actually um, embodies what amateur radio is about. He tries to bring people together from different countries, and um, just his heart is 100% in the amateur radio. There's a lot more that he's done that I've actually left out in this, but congratulations to Mustafa. And I don't know if you know him. He comes often to what Dayton Amateur Radio or, or to the Hambenton. Oh, that's terrific. That's wonderful. All right. And, and well, great. That, well, Michael, thanks for all you do for Dayton. And yes, every worker there is a volunteer. And those of us that attend every year realize that. And I hope to hear your guitar playing and your great band as well. Bob, over to you. And I'll let you say uh, sayonara to uh, Michael till we see him in, in just a few more weeks. Uh, keep a parking right. spot uh, clear, and we'll be there with the big truck and unloading and <laughs> all that. We'll look forward to seeing you, and we're going to bring all of our Ham Nation friends. And I'm really looking forward to uh, doing the broadcast uh, with Leo on Saturday. That's going to be so good. So thanks so much for all that you do, Michael, for Ham Radio, and especially for all of us here on Ham Nation. Leo Laporte really appreciates that. I talked to him last week about it, and he's always overwhelmed with the reception that we get from you guys in putting this together. Thanks very much for your contribution. And we, again, uh, uh, congratulations to all of those that have been uh, awarded these great awards, but especially to our buddy George on his birthday. How cool is that? 7-3, Michael, and we'll see you very soon. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having, on behalf of the Dayton Hamvention and Dayton Image Radio Association, Thanks for having me and, and allowing us to make the announcements here. Uh, what a wonderful venue you have. All right. Um, best of luck to all of you and God bless. Thank you. Okay. We'll uh, see you in a few. That's great. That's great. George, that's wonderful. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, you deserve that. You know that, of course. <laughs> well, thanks, Bob. I, I didn't even know I was in the running. I, I believe someone in Missouri maybe nominated me, but uh, I didn't know till uh, the voting and all was done that uh, there was, you know, I, I was even being considered for that. So I'm honored uh, that they took notice and that, you know, even more honored that people are watching our videos, you know, and, and learning more about amateur radio and getting back into building things. Uh, some of those who've been uh, dormant for a while are getting back, but, you know, all the new people too. So, you know, my evil plan is working out just like I had hoped. All right. Very good. Well, what a great birthday. And uh, uh, Gordo, uh, how can we top that to uh, make our friend George uh, even uh, better than he is because he doesn't get any better than this, right? Uh, that's it. Well, we can make George envious that He's got to score one of these, and that is the infamous Dayton Hamvention event that occurred a couple of years ago. <laughs> Only a few of you will know what that means, but yeah. hams persevere. Nothing bogs down the Dayton Hamvention. <laughs> oh, that. that's a great button. <laughs> great button. Well, I guess we need to go out and uh, let Amanda congratulate george let's see where amanda is and she's got some special news her and jeff i hear you've really had some tough times here lately uh amanda we hope that uh, everything's okay how's it in colorado these days thank you bob uh we're we're recovering from a lot of bad luck from the last uh oh boy about seven months now but to add to the bad luck i have to first say that jeff and i both we passed our extra exams last week, so we're Whoa, really excited. All right. Hey. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you, you guys. And, um, okay, so our last event, I know that you guys know that we've had a lot of bad luck lately, but 
Um, and I'm dressed in fire gear because yes, we had a house fire back in, um, I'd say the third week of January. So oh, I was no. on. Do you hear me now? <laughs> oh no, a house fire? Oh my gosh, how much did it burn? Uh, it was started in the kitchen. And I bet a lot of you guys have heard of Federal Pacific um, breaker boxes and breakers. So uh, I'll get into it. So we can roll um, a little slideshow here. I have some of the damage for you guys. Here's oh, a kitchen. No. Jeff saw some oh. sparks coming out of the, uh, the, um, the stove there. And he didn't think much about it. He turned the knob off and thought that it would be safe enough to go away. Thank goodness he only came over for lunch, which is about 200 feet away is where I work. So he came over for lunch for the day. And um, a next door neighbor came over and said, uh, you know, you guys, I see a lot of smoke coming out of your house and it smells like burnt plastic. So uh. firefighter Jeff uh. kicked into high gear and there he is with our dog, of course, too. That's what he does for a living, uh. thank goodness. He runs next door. And even before calling 911, he uh, runs into the house and uh, put down the fire with the kitchen hose. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's some of the burnt damage. That's what all of our cabinets look like. It was really, really awful. Um, but it burnt the ceiling and a couple of the walls. And there's my dad, <laughs> God bless him. He helped us oh. tear down the kitchen. And so there's new drywall next to completely smoke black drywall. And Jeff wants to say something here, so I'll let him jump oh, in. I was just gonna comment on how Amanda looked really thrilled in that shot right there. <laughs> I do look kind of grumpy, guys. I was mad the whole time. <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> so there's my new oh. kitchen in progress. New stove, new refrigerator. Uh, we still have to wait on a couple of cabinets to come in. Uh, but it's, it's cleaning soot off, you guys. I don't recommend it to anybody because it's a horrible job. And every time I had to touch that black stuff, I was cursing the whole time. So uh, it's been quite the year for us with bad luck. Um, I think we'll go to the next slide. Broken ankle. That was one oh. thing. Uh, next, we had the uh, deep. Oh! Uh, tree in the Jeep and then the fire. So we've shouted out to a few people in hopes of um, asking for someone to look over us. So the lottery next, is next. Yes, the lottery is next there. So um, next slide, if you would. There you go. <laughs> You're going to need this man's help. <laughs> We're hoping to get some favors out there, you guys. So. It's, it's been a lot of fun. And um, I think our bad luck is over. Lottery tickets are in store and we're looking forward to just continuing on. We've got a new truck, new kitchen. So nothing else, uh, we hope. I've, we've got our rabbit's foots in our back pocket though. But thanks you guys. It's been nice to be on here tonight. Hey, hey, Amanda, uh, your friend Bill, K5LN, saying in the chat room, you need to move. But you're not moving. You have all this new stuff now. So you're, you're there, right? No, no karma is going to run you away. That's right. And, you know, we actually considered moving, thinking that there was something cursed about the house. But <laughs> I live so close to work, 200 feet, less than 200 feet, you guys. So I just walk right out my backyard, down the alley, and I'm there. So... Oh, uh, wow. we like it, actually. We're really thrilled with our house now. And brand new paint job throughout the whole house. So, can't complain. Remodel. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, we're we're sorry that you had all this bad luck, but we're thrilled that you uh, uh, that you live with the fire truck driver and you live with the carpenter that can put it back together. I mean, how cool is that? So, oh, uh, congrats on the new stuff. But sorry to hear all of that. And uh, your leg, it's okay. You're all right. You're uh, able to ski again. <laughs> skiing, water skiing. That's what we look forward to is boating season. But um. Yes, uh, I think I can. I'm walking just normal now, so we we actually are very good right now. Thank you, Bob and Gordo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's great. Oh, good stuff, Amanda. Well, we'll see you on 40 meters after a while and uh, see what goes from there. And uh, really nice to have you. Jeff, you take care of her now. And uh, if we have a fire, we'll uh, call you and you can drive your truck out here real fast, okay? <laughs> All righty, Bob. <laughs> Sounds good, you guys. Okay. Thank you. 40 meters for sure. Uh, All right. See you later. <laughs> oh, golly. That's great. Oh, I'm glad that everything turned out good. Everything turned out good. Well, you know, it's just so much fun to operate anything on ham radio for me. But I guess the funnest thing, is that a word, Gordo? Funnest? It is now. Can I say it? Funnest? It is now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, the funnest thing I have is getting on this old stuff. I'm tuning around a week ago, and it was a contest. I'm going, oh, that's right, International DX Contest. I put on this stuff from, uh, well, the, the receivers, uh, 1957, uh, 75, 84. Uh, I've, I, I didn't have it, and I, I got it later. But I've owned the transmitter, the HT37, since 1962, and I love it. I fired it up. I'm going, hmm, I wonder if I work these guys. So I'm going to let you in on a little bit of video and uh, let you see what's going on and hear what's going on. This was in a contest with all this old ancient gear. Look how much fun we can have. These are big signals. Uh, this guy's in France. L let's go see if we can work him. I got to calibrate, I got to tune up on that frequency. These are separate receiver and transmitters. So for, now this doesn't put a signal on the air like that uh, horrible guy tuning up a while ago. It's a very simple, small signal and we can get right on frequency. So take it out of calibrate. We're ready to go. Wow, was that fun or what? It's contest weekend, and uh, no, I I didn't get in to work any points. I get in to kind of check my station. Uh, no, I don't tune up on uh, signals and all that. We we do that on a dummy load, but once we're all tuned up, and then you go into calibrate mode because we have separate transmitter and receiver, as you saw. I work these guys, and it's kind of fun when you get in a big pile up. Sometimes these are guys running thousands of watts, and here we are with about four or five hundred watts of this old vintage gear of the fifties and sixties. I, I get such a kick out of this. I just wanted to share this with you and let you see what happens. It's a it's a great fun thing to do when there are contests, special event stations, or just getting on the air. It's so important get on the air look how much fun we had i'm gonna go back and work some more i heard that guy in guatemala let's go get him so tag along have fun whatever it takes to make it happen it's amateur radio check this out He had a live stream going from St. Paul <laughs> and Montserrat. They had a live stream going, and that, that was really cool. And I, I, I'm sure there's more and more guys doing that, but uh, TM1T, they're a contest station down there. And uh, those are the kind of things you find on the air. And, and don't be afraid to jump in. My gosh, uh, uh, so many go, oh, I wouldn't, who cares? We're not there for contest points. We're not going to beat K <laughs> K3LR. We're there to have fun. And uh, the other thing, uh, I was on tw uh, uh, 21 uh, 430 yesterday, and uh, there's, I worked um, KA1KN uh, with all this old stuff on 21 430 on AM. So, Get on the air. Gordo, any other uh, support to uh, make that uh, any stronger? Um, get on the air, exclamation point. That's the fun of ham radio. No matter what rig you have, there'll be people listening for you. Get on the air. Back to you, Bob.
Yeah, and you know, uh, 10 meters has been really wide open. So if you have a technician class license, welcome to HF because there's so much you can work on 10 meters. And uh, get, if you have a general license and so on, get down in the lower frequencies. But just have fun and uh, uh, listen around. It's really fun these days. But uh, while we're doing that, uh, look what I got. Man, oh, man, thank you very much. Ray sent me my own little electric radio personalized cup you can get this from them this is cool and i hope all of you have subscribed to electric radio i'm telling you it's the best read in our hobby just all kinds of pictures and stuff of stations that people have built but then what's really good about it is they get into a lot of diagrams and things that that help us do things and keep our radios going i love electric radio it's uh, it's my favorite magazine and it's been around for a long time. So uh, you want to go check out uh, some of these things. Uh, don't be afraid to jump in because uh, people are waiting for you. <laughs> Working a contest with all that. Oh, my. And I think Randy, my friend Randy AGE, said on the chat room, uh, my, I didn't work very fast. That's right, Randy. It was pretty slow. <laughs> I didn't have a very big Q count, so to speak, but I had fun. You should have been here, I guess, with your camera and even done that better, Randy. Oh, he's got some good stuff happening. Well, all the fun is done here for a while. Now we're going to move down and uh, see what's happening on Newsline because there's a lot of other news going on. Not that George is the the big technical dude now uh, for the uh, Dayton Amateur Radio uh, Convention. Our great, wonderful partner here, George. Oh, I'm still, that's so great. That's so great. Don, take her away. Let's hear what other news you have from Newsline. How about that? Cool. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and roll the package. From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 1,856. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, March 13th, 2013. Something unexpected appears to be happening on the sun. 2013 is supposed to be the year of solar max, also known as the peak of cycle 24. Yet 2013 has arrived and solar activity is relatively low. The quiet has led some observers to wonder if forecasters missed the mark. Conventional wisdom holds that solar activity swings back and forth like a simple pendulum. At one end of the cycle, there is a quiet time with few sunspots and flares. At the other end, the solar max brings high sunspot numbers and solar storms with a regular rhythm that repeats every 11 years. Reality, however, is more complicated. Astronomers have been counting sunspots for centuries, and they have seen that the solar cycle is not perfectly regular. For one thing, the back-and-forth swing in sunspot counts can take anywhere from 10 to 13 years to complete. Also, the amplitude of the cycle varies, yet some solar maxima are very weak, while others can be very strong. Dean Pencil is a solar physicist at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. He says that the last two solar maxima, around 1989 and 2001, had not one, but two peaks. He says that the solar activity went up, dipped, and then resumed while performing a mini-cycle within the solar max that lasted about two years. Pencil says that the same thing could be happening now. He notes that the sunspot counts jumped in 2011 and dipped in 2012. As such, he expects them to rebound again, saying that another peak will happen in 2013, possibly lasting into 2014. Let's hope he's right. Heather Emby, KB3TZD, reporting. The resurgence in ham radio may partly be due to a renaissance in home building, coupled with a need on the part of radio amateurs to serve their community. So says ARRL Executive Vice President Dave Sumner, K1ZZ, in a recent article appearing in the Urgent Communications Online newsletter. Sumner notes that when amateurs began experimenting with radio more than a century ago, they had no choice but to build everything they needed. Some went on to become successful entrepreneurs, selling their creations to fellow hobbyists who were more interested in operating radios than in constructing them. Others built their own receivers and transmitters either from economic necessity or for the fun and satisfaction of being able to say, I did it myself. The advent of solid-state devices, printed circuit boards, and automatic parts insertion removed the price advantage that kits enjoyed. By the time the Heath Company closed its doors in 1992, most amateur radio equipment was being manufactured in Japan. But this has not stopped ham radio operators from continuing the art of home construction, and this in itself has led to a resurrection in the art of kit building.
That's Amateur Radio Newsline Skeeter Nash in 5ASH. As Dave Sumner notes, society has come to rely on a fragile telecommunications infrastructure that is susceptible to overload and outright failure. And while ham radio operators cannot substitute for all that infrastructure, hams can communicate no matter what. An American satellite abandoned in 1967 as a piece of space junk has begun transmitting again after 46 years, and a ham radio operator is responsible for finding it. Amateur Radio Newsline's Bruce Tennant, K6PZW. Phil Williams, G3YPQ, is an amateur radio astronomer in North Cornwall in the UK. According to reports, he accidentally picked up the signal after cross-checking with various lists, and he identified it as LES-1. LES-1 was built by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and launched in 1965. The satellite failed to reach its intended orbit owing to a wiring error and had been drifting out of control ever since. Williams ran across it while monitoring near 237 megahertz when he noticed a signal with a peculiar signal drift caused by the birds tumbling end over end every four seconds as the solar panels became shadowed by the satellite's engine. Williams said that gives the signal a particularly ghostly sound as the voltage from the solar panels fluctuates. The LES-1 satellite is about the size of a small car and is not likely to re-enter the atmosphere for a long time as the orbit is still relatively high. It poses no threat other than that caused by the thousands of other pieces of space junk currently in orbit. By now it's likely that the onboard batteries have disintegrated so some other component failure has caused the transmitter to start up when it's in sunlight bringing the ghost satellite back to life. It's remarkable to think that electronics built nearly five decades ago, 12 years before Voyager 1, and long before microprocessors and integrated circuits, is still capable of working in the hostile environment of space. And finally this week, the nominating period for the 2013 Amateur Radio Newsline Young Ham of the Year Award is now open. Again, Skeeter Dash and 5 ash Created in 1986, this award is offered to recognize the accomplishments of a radio amateur age 18 or younger for his or her accomplishments in service to the nation, his or her community, or to the advancement of the state of the art through amateur radio. As in years past, corporate underwriter Yesu USA will transport the winner to the Huntsville Ham Fest in Huntsville, Alabama, where the award will be formally presented. Yesu will also provide hotel accommodations as well as convention tickets and a prize of Yesu amateur radio equipment to the winner. CQ Magazine will again treat this year's recipient to a week at Space Camp Huntsville. Heil Sound Limited will be gifting this year's winner with an additional prize. Last, but by no means least, Amateur Radio Newsline will present the winner with the official Young Ham of the Year Award plaque, which is underwritten by Dave Bell, W6AQ of DBA Entertainment in Hollywood, California. Complete details, rules, and a required nominating form in Adobe PDF format are available on our website at arnewsline.org slash Y-H-O-T-Y. The cutoff date for submitting nominations is May 30th, 2013, and we at Amateur Radio Newsline always look forward to this time of the year as we get to see firsthand some of the brightest young minds in the world doing amazing things via the great hobby and service of Amateur Radio. It gives us confidence that the future is indeed in good hands. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news brought to you each and every week for 35 years and counting at www.arnewsline.org. I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. And there you go. There's your news for the week. And, uh, yeah, the, the Young Ham of the Year Award is just the coolest thing, and I've been lucky enough to have awarded that several times. And, and uh, I always look forward to that. Well, let's talk about radios, shall we? Are you looking to take a high-performance HF rig or maybe a solid two-meter mobile on your next trip? You're going to be away from home. You want to tap into D-Star, maybe from the palm of your hand. Well, on route, on location, on the go, doesn't matter where you are, ICOM can help you take ham radio on the road. Now, we've been talking about all these multiband stuff, uh, VHF, HF, UHF, and the D-Star stuff. I want to talk about what people might consider a basic radio, but this is way more than a basic radio. This is the ICV-8000. Yeah, it's a two-meter radio. It's just a two-meter. No, it's not just a two-meter radio. It's 75 watts of, out of output power. The uh, V-8000 has a rugged die-cast aluminum chassis. Very fast memory channel scanning with dynamic memory scan. You need to go, look at that thing. That's a gorgeous radio. You need to go on uh, to icomamerica.com and, and check this out. Complete radio control in the palm of your hand with uh, an incredible uh, full control hand mic. It has backlight customization. If you don't like the green, you can change it to amber. And also, an amateur radio first weather scan alert. This is a full featured two meter radio. 
Yeah, it's just two meters. Well, you know what? With this radio, you're not going to need anything else, especially with that 75 watts of output power. Just amazing. Now, make sure you go to icomamerica.com slash hamnation. You can find a lot more information on ICOM's line of HF, VHF, UHF, D-Star, everything, including the ICV-8000 you see there. And that's a gorgeous radio. I mean, it's, it's rugged. That thing would be right at home in, in my Jeep. I'd have to remove my 7,000, but that's okay. You can also enter ICOM's weekly drawing for ICOM swag, like ICOM t-shirts and ICOM hats, and you can find out how you can win the monthly grand prize drawing for a free ICOM radio. Again, it's icomamerica.com slash hamnation. All the official rules are there. Uh, go there, check out all of ICOM's previous drawing winners. You can sign up, and good luck. And uh, George, I believe you have information on the ICOM drawing, and uh, congratulations on your honor and and happy birthday. And, and am I the only one that got the green St. Patrick's Day memo? Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. What's the story yeah. here? Yeah, we missed out. We missed good, out. Good job. Uh, missed that. I was too busy I working was... DX on uh, my old Halicrafters. <laughs> I understand I'm that. Well, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to be on the Afternet uh, uh, stuff tonight from my from my Jeep. So we'll see how the little mobile thing goes. But George, tell us about the Icom America Ham Nation contest, will you? Well, Don, you were mentioning about that uh, eight thousand a moment ago. That is a nice radio. Uh, I looked it up online this afternoon. I was surprised at how inexpensive it is, uh, especially for a seventy-five watt radio. So that's definitely. Mm -hmm worth having a look at if you need a two-meter mobile. Uh, tune in and enter to win. You can register after each episode of Ham Nation for ICOM's weekly swag drawing and monthly radio giveaway. Uh, you maximize your chances by entering after each Ham Nation episode. That means in March you can enter four times, and you could win swag, or you could win... Let's see, what's it going to be this month? It's going to be an IC2300H two-meter mobile with 65 watts of output. Uh, the IC2300H is built tough. It passes the latest mill standard 810G specifications, including shock, vibration, and temperature test. So make the IC2300H your rig for rugged mobile operations. Okay, dokey. Yeah. Yeah. I was just looking at that online. That's a cool radio, isn't it? Ha. Ah. Well, well, I got my two meter antenna up this week. So maybe I'll be looking to get one of those and fire up two meters here. I'm, I'm, uh, I haven't operated a lot of two meters, but we'll get that going. Hey, before we get back to a uh, smoke and solder, I got a wonderful note here from Neil Livingston. Um, Gordo, check this out. He's um, learning all of the things from your book, of course. But when he was in CB radio years ago, before it was really crazy, him and a friend used to send images on slow scan TV over CB. Have you ever heard of that one, Gordo? Wow, <laughs> over oh. CB radio. No, I've not heard of slow scan, but you know, CB radio is a great way for new technician class operators to get on 10 meters like you were talking about earlier, Bob. 10 is hot yep. every day. So if you've got an old CB antenna, a big Shakespeare big stick or one of the big quads, go on 10 meters, 28300 to 28500 for technician class operators and work the world. Back to you, Bob. CB is good as a starter well, for a ham radio. Absolutely. And what's cool about Neil is that he got inspired, he said, through Ham Nation and watching George and Smoke and Solder and, and yourself. And of course, your, your manual is helping him uh, learn all of this. But very, very smart, Neil. And he didn't give a call sign because he doesn't have one yet. He's going to let us know what that is. He found a local club and he's meeting with the secretary tomorrow to talk about his training. So very, very good. That's what you need to do. Get together with the club. you got to have an Elmer. you have to have somebody to guide you through it. So I just wanted to read that because we get a lot of emails, all three of us. And probably, Don, you get some too. I never asked you about that, Don. But anyway, we, we appreciate all of these. We, we want you to get as much as you can out of ham radio. And thank you very much, Leo Laporte, to give us this time and the bandwidth and all of the crew back in Petaluma to keep it going. So, George, uh, Neil, sitting there waiting. What are we doing this week? Let's see what you got going smoking solder birthday boy 
Well, Bob, you know, we just released uh, the March episode of AmateurLogic.tv today, and in there, I did a project with the uh, little Arduino microcontroller to kind of show people how to get started with it and some of the cool things that you can do. And while it was sitting on the bench there, I said, well, I ought to come up with something uh, for Ham Nation using that this week. So here you go. We're going to talk about a simple transistor relay driver. This week on Smoke and Solder, we're going to look at relays, specifically how to drive a high current load with a low current source. I'll use an Arduino microcontroller to turn on and off a 120 volt light bulb. Now the Arduino can only source 5 volts at a maximum of 40 milliamps. There's no way that's going to drive a 110 volt lamp. Now our relay can easily handle the current and voltage of the lamp on its contacts. This is a 12 volt relay. However, the coil requires 65 milliamps, and the Arduino, again, is only 5 volts at 40 milliamps. Well, thankfully, we can use a transistor driver to control this relay from the Arduino. First, let's write our program. We'll use this statement in the setup section to set pin number 2 to be an output. Then, down in the loop section, we'll do a digital write to pin 2 and set it high, which will give us 5 volts on that pin. Next, we'll delay for one second. Then, we'll do a digital write to pin 2, causing it to go low. Then again, we'll delay for another one second. And then the loop just continues over and over until the Arduino is turned off. Let's take a look at our schematic. I'm using a 2N2405 NPN transistor. I've got the emitter tied to ground. The collector is tied to one side of a 12-volt relay coil. The other side of that coil is tied to 12 volts. Across the coil, I've also got a diode, and that's there to suppress any spikes that might be generated. On the base of the transistor, I've got a 2K ohm resistor, and that's being fed voltage from Arduino pin number 2. When pin number 2 goes high, it supplies enough voltage to the base of that transistor to cause it to go into saturation. This makes the transistor act like a simple switch, and it supplies a negative connection to the bottom of the relay coil. We use a value of resistor which will set the base current high enough to drive the transistor into saturation or fully turned on. This way the transistor will have minimal voltage drop and therefore dissipate very little power while delivering most of the 12 volts to the relay coil. How do we determine the value of resistor to use? Well, it's simple. We first need to know the amount of current the relay coil will draw when energized. Our relay draws 75 milliamps. We also need to know the transistor's HFE, which is its minimum DC current gain. The HFE of our transistor is 60. Now we divide the relay current by the HFE, so 75 milliamps divided by 60 equals 1.25 milliamps. We double this number just to be sure the transistor remains in saturation. So 1.25 times 2 equals 2.5 milliamps of transistor-based current. To determine the resistor value, we use Ohm's law. I equals E over R. We know the Arduino supplies a typical TTL voltage of 5 volts. So we divide 5 volts by 2.5 milliamps, which is 0 0.0025 amps, and we get 2,000 ohms of resistance. Before I connect this circuit to the Arduino, I'm going to test it out just by using uh, four AA batteries there in a pack. That'll be 6 volts. We'll use this to simulate the 5 volts coming from the Arduino output. Here's our circuit. I've got the ground bus across the back here. On that, I've got the negative lead from the battery pack tied in, and I've got the negative lead from our 12 volt supply tied in there as well. There's a jumper that comes over to the emitter of the transistor. We can tell that's the emitter because there's a little tab right there on the side. Next, on the base of the transistor, I've got this 2K ohm resistor. Right here, we've got the six volts connected to the battery pack that we're using to trigger the transistor with and during our testing stage. We can see the relay energizing there. On the collector of the transistor, 
we've got a wire that comes over here and goes to one side of the relay coil. The other side of the relay coil has positive 12 volts on it. Also on the collector here, you can see I've got a diode tied to ground, and that's there to suppress any spikes that might be generated. I'm going to measure the current to see that we've got the right size of resistor in here. I've got a 2K, which is what we calculated. So we'll put our current meter there in series with the uh, 6 volts of battery voltage. We can see that the relay did close. And we've got 2.7 milliamps. 2.5 was our target. When we drop this down to 5 volts, we should be just about where we need to be. And I let this run for a while, and I don't feel any heat at all on the transistor or the resistor, so there's no wasted current there, and we're not going to burn up anything. Let's do another check. Let's check the current flow on the 12-volt supply that's driving the relay. Now over here, we've got 66 milliamps, and the relay was rated to draw 65 milliamps, so we're very close on that as well. So the transistor itself is only drawn in the neighborhood of 1 milliamp. Let's try it on the Arduino now. Now I'm going to upload the program to the Arduino. And let's hook it up and see what we've got. I'll connect from ground on the Arduino to our ground bus. And then I've got digital pin 2 that I'm going to connect as the input to our collector there through the 2K ohm resistor. As you can see, seems to be working. The relay holds in for one second and drops for one second. So it works. There you've got the lowly little Arduino with its TTL 5 volt output driving a 110 volt light bulb. Thanks to a little transistor driver and a relay. So there you go, the transistor relay driver. This could be handy in a lot of different applications. Well, that's it. And that, that's a lot of fun and useful little circuit, uh, particularly with working with these microcontrollers or TTL level signals where you need to drive a, a relay to carry a higher current load. And uh, in our weekly contest, last week I asked the question, what is this? And I got a lot of answers on it. And uh, some of them were right, some of them were wrong. But our winner is John King, WB4NHX. And John said, that's a T-network. You're right, John, that is a T-network. And you win the copy of Jerry Buston's great Construction HF Wire Antenna book that you can find at your favorite ham radio vendor. And for next week, we've got a prize here coming from Frank at CheapHam.com. And he's donated a little Alenco DJ V57T. It's a little dual-band handy talkie from Alenco. Uh, thanks, Frank. This is going to make someone a nice prize. If you'd like to win that, you're going to have to do a little bit of work this week. Uh, maybe not. You might already know the answer to this. In that circuit, I energized the relay when the base of the transistor went high. Now, what changes would I need to make if I wanted to energize that relay when the base of the transistor went low? If you think you know the answer... Send me an email to hamnationcontest at gmail.com, and you could be next week's lucky winner of this uh, great little handy talkie from cheapham.com. And an upcoming build I've got going on here that some of you may want to get in on. This is a, a great little kit here. We built an AM radio when I was taking electronics in college, and it was really a learning experience. So I'm going to be building this AMFM Super Heterodyne radio kit. We're going to build it a stage at a time and test it as we go and discuss how it works. If you'd like to join along with us, then visit partsexpress.com. That's parts-express.com. And it's part number 320084. Uh, get your kit ordered, and we'll be doing this uh, probably starting in a couple of weeks. Give everybody a chance to get theirs ordered and get it in. We're going to have a lot of fun with this, and we're going to learn something about how a radio works. And one final thing I want to mention here, that's our friends over at the uh, Do Drop In Echo Link conference server that hosts the Ham Nation Net after show every week. Well, they've got something they want to give away here. It's a pair of balloons for a high-altitude balloon project. 
They've got a pair of parachutes mm -hmm. so that you can get the balloons and the payload back down to the ground safely. And uh, they're flame retardant chutes, so there should be no smoke and solder. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, they're also going to give away a tiny track a GPS unit and a two meter transceiver. So if you've got a club or a group that's into doing these balloon projects or would like to try one, um, they're going to give it away. I, I don't know why. I don't know if one of the guys there uh, was wanting to do it and backed out or if uh, this is just a, a bunch of the members got together and put this package together. But if you think that you could use it, then give them an email over at uh, balloons at dodropin.org. That's balloons at d-o-d-r-o-p-i-n dot org. So uh, there you go. And uh, thanks to Steve and Dave and everybody over at Do Drop In for making that available. Bob? Wonderful. Wonderful. And, and it's... The circuit you had is so useful. I want everybody to go back, look at the replays, and we really need you to look at the replays, by the way, since we're talking about them. You see, uh, Twit does not get uh, any kind of count on the live. It's what, what's seen on the replay. So have all your friends go look at the replays. Just put Ham Nation into Google. That's all you got to do, and they're all there. But what I'm talking about is that circuit. I've built that so many times, George, and it's not all it is is a transistor. And a relay. Uh, I go to Gateway Electronics in St. Louis. Gateway has some great stuff. You might want to go check them out sometimes, gateway.com. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to take a transistor and a simple switch. Here, you know, I'm using a lot of Les Paul guitar switches. They could be any kind of switch. Just two wires touched together. But that's what I'm building here for another antenna relay. You'll see the transistors in the bottom, at the bottom of the relays. Those transistors, my fingers out of the way, drive, of course, the relay, as, as you saw. And, and it's so easy. And I bring the, uh, the base of the transistor out on this connector, which then goes into an interface here. You can do all kinds of things. You can key 110, as you saw, or antennas. It's really great. And, of course, I, uh, I uh, hooked the, uh, the relays up to uh, SO239s. So, George, congrats on bringing that. I really appreciate you bringing that. That's, uh, how many times can we use a simple circuit like that, right? Oh, definitely. You know, that's one of those, the, the first time I ran across it, I said, you know, <laughs> this is good. I've got a lot of things I can do with this. So it's one of those that it's, well, I actually have it written down in my drawer of scrap paper over here in notes over the years because it just keeps coming up again and again. Yeah, and the other thing you showed sometime we might want to talk about, everybody needs one of these I have to explain yep. sometime what it does, George, because it might be a little complicated or something. It's not at all. It's just a plug board. It's a way to patch things together. And like somebody said in the smoke in the uh, chat room, no smoke and solder. No, you don't need smoke and solder. It's just a little test thing to see if things work. Please get into building. That's the simple stuff you start with. That's how George, Gordo, Don, myself, all of us, we get into building simple circuits like that and then say, wow, if we put one more ahead of it, we can do that and one more ahead of that. And the next thing you know, you've uh, built a computer. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, that was great, George. My kind of stuff. I love it. And uh, we're going to we're gonna hear more next week, I guess, on what you do if you add another transistor and go the other state. Aha. Okay. And then... Uh, Let's go see what's happening in northern Illinois. I know there's a lot of a lot of chatter in the chat room tonight, as well could be because of all the great news we've had. And uh, it's George's birthday. Cheryl, what's going on in Zion, Illinois? Hey there, Bob. How are you tonight? And happy big birthday to you, George. That's so great. Wonderful uh, job you did tonight, as usual. And hello to everybody in the chat wait, room. Wait, wait, Always wait, great. wait, wait, hey. wait, wait. Hang on. I'm uh, no. Wait a minute. Hey, Gordo. Where you at? Gordo. Yeah. Where did she Where get the little uh, dancing ball yeah. doodad? I thought only you had one that I gave you. Mm, well, I, was, you, I didn't I, even get to ask I that. I, I was supposed to tease you, Gordo. Gordo. I was supposed to tease you and <laughs> see if you noticed anything new, but you jumped on the, 
the the bandwagon so soon that I can't keep anything from you, can I? You just know everything. No. You know what you used to have, and you know there's only one of a kind. And and I wow. have my new my new K9 BIK in green tonight, which I always am usually blue, but. <laughs> I really love those lights so much. I had little conversations with Bob back and forth, and he sent them along to me. And now he's passed the baton, so it's still you, Gordo. It's over here in the Midwest now, and I just love it to pieces. I got brand new batteries in there. It looks really great, and I, I have to say thank you so much for sending that, Bob. It really lights up my life. A little bit of blinkies here and there, and we're good to go. So... What do you think about that, Gordo? All right. Well, I love it. It couldn't have been at a better home after Bob's <laughs> place. And uh, I'll go to green as soon as you finish. So go right ahead while I do green. Perfect. Nice to see you, Gordo. Nice shirt, by the way. <laughs> love it. It's always so uh, festive with the tan and everything there. I wish I could do that here. So, you know, we had a lot of activity tonight, everybody. And thanks for your questions. I love that. Thanks for, uh, for participating. I like to always bring your questions to our hosts as usual. So KD4EBL, he says, please ask Bob how his book is coming. And I said, what book would that be? And he says, it's a rewrite of a handbook that you wrote many years ago. Is that uh, on the table right now, Bob? Yeah, that table right here. Absolutely. Yep. Cool. Here here. We're working. Uh, we're right here. Yeah. We're rewriting wow. the whole thing, and I'm hoping to have it by Dayton, um, but we're, we'll see. I'm not rushing it along, but it was um, written back in the in the late 70s, and it needed mm -hmm. to be updated. Not the information, because that's just all science, but some of the pictures and stuff. So stand by, everybody. It's right around the corner. So and great, great new releases on the horizon, folks. I'll, I'll, I want a copy of that, too, definitely, no doubt about that. Um, also, we have... Chuck, NK9I, he says he was looking at uh, coaxial dipoles, and this is for you, Bob, and he was wondering what coax uh, that you use to build them, and if he strips the shield from the coax for the total length or adds wire is the question. Oh, I, I uh, no, I, I usually add twin lead or uh, open wire to a little more broadbanded if you do that on the ends. Uh, go to IAC. IAC, International Antenna Corp. Uh, they're the best builders of that, and they've got some diagrams and stuff on there, too, and they will uh, guide you along. But uh, you have to use special coax. It's got to be RG58 at the, at the velocity factor. That's the important thing. Velocity factor is determined by the kind of dielectric, that foamy stuff. Well, you don't want that foamy stuff, and you have to make real sure that you have the right coax or they won't work very well at or won't work at all. There you go, right there on the screen, IAC. Check it out, and that uh, you'll learn a lot there. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you, Bob. You, you got them dialed in pretty good. I'm sure Chuck will really like that information as well as all the other people that are, are watching tonight and in the future during the replays. And, and you podcast, folks. I don't get that much time to even say hi, hi to the podcast. Hi, podcast uh, listeners. It's kind of fun to know that you're out there, uh, too. Um, so great. Thanks for having us uh, be in your cars, vehicles, and homes, which, whichever you might have us on. So here's one more other question. And it's a good one because it's it's sort of uh, kind of goes along with 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 what happened to Amanda. I'm so sorry that you had all those problems, and congratulations to both of you guys on your ham ham uh, extra class licenses. I'm really impressed, and I got to jump on board here. But I wanted to just say, here's a great question from one of our all time chat room gang. He's always there. K7 AJ AGE Randy. He says. Do you guys have smoke detectors in your radio shacks? I'm going to start with you, Gordo. Um, I do. In fact, if you could count how many smoke detectors I have in this house, uh, probably eight to ten. There's one, there's <laughs> one, and there's one. So three right here in the ham shack. And uh, yes, my, my sign has gone green, uh, Cheryl, just to awesome. make up for your dancing globes. <laughs> I love it. And happy St. Patrick's Day to you a little bit early, too. So, Gordo, I got to say, you probably have the most smoke detectors out of everybody, I have to say you'd probably win the award there. I probably have three. Uh, oh, yeah, here's here's a good one. David, uh, the floor director here, says, K9LPK says, 
Here they are. Uh, make sure you mount them. Don't leave them in the package. <laughs> you need the batteries in them. Here they are. Brand new. Well, we did some remodeling here. We just wanted some new units. We wanted some new units. We're, we're still good. How about, Bob, how many do you have? Do you have one in your shack and other places, too? Smoke yeah, detector. They were, they're part of the, of the whole system here in the house. I think there's about six of them. Oh, okay. Well, good. You and, should. Uh, in there. Uh, Cheryl, uh, case in point, I put away my soldering iron about two years ago. It accidentally had the button pushed, and in the oh. radio room, the alarm went off, and I goes, what the heck is this? Because I had just changed all the batteries oh. for daylight savings time, and here was my soldering iron, my 325, melting away uh, uh, the stand oh. that it was uh, right next to. So smoke alarms, all of you pay off Abs big time. Absolutely, absolutely. Number one, smoke alarms. Number two, weather radio. Always got to have your weather radio and be ready. You never know what's going to happen. I'm a big weather, I'm a, um, a, a certified weather spotter and participate that way in, in amateur radio as well. Now, I think there's some other questions here. I just want to make sure. Oh, it, it, definitely. It's uh, KC9 SBC, Jose. He chimed in and he said, ask Bob if an earth ground to chassis of receiver need when using only resonant antenna and if do you use ground with your station of course i know that's a yes that you definitely use a ground but if an earth ground to chassis of a receiver is, is needed when using a, only a resonant antenna is that yes or no or true or false bob well a resonant antenna doesn't have anything to do with the earth ground earth ground you've got you got to have one ground for your whole station not four Just, or five grounds you don't ground that pin over in that socket and that pin in that socket and then drive a big rod outside and you're going to have so many different grounds and therefore you create a ground loop, get ready for lots mm -hmm. of hums and RFI. Got to have one ground. Sure. Thank you for that, Bob. Absolutely. Too many grounds spoiled the broth. Just remember only one ground like Bob said. He's absolutely <laughs> right. But then again, we all know he's a genius anyway. So what can we say, Bob? You're pretty sharp there. Thank you. Thank you. And here's here's one last one for you, Gordo. And the only thing I, before I move to you, Gordo, I really want to know, George, are you still on right now? Yeah, I am, Cheryl. I never asked you how many smoke alarms you had. That's not fair. You're supposed to answer that question. Well, I have several in the house. My shack is sitting out here separate of the house. It's in a different building. Uh, and I just rebuilt it uh, this year. So, no, I don't have one in here yet. The only one I've got is right here between my eyes. But uh, I, I want to hook up one and run a wire in the house so I can have the alarm in there so that there'll be somebody to actually hear the smoke alarm if it goes off. Right, right. Well, <laughs> after tonight's show, I'm sure tomorrow will be the day it'll be scheduled for it to go up. If, if you don't have one, you'll buy one. If you have one, like I have a couple here, those are going up tomorrow. That's the day. It's, let's just say it's smoke alarm scheduled. Oh, those are a backup one. David said those are the backups. I didn't know that we had so many, but <laughs> yeah, it's really a good idea. You don't want to have it happen like like uh, like poor Gordo had that 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 solder gun with the with the stuck button. Can you even imagine how horrible that is? And if he didn't have the smoke smoke alarm with a with a fresh battery in there, it could have been all over for for his home. I mean, seriously, it just takes just a little bit and it's all over. It's not even worth it. Just get one and do that. And last question for Gordo: W six ICL from Ira. Thank you, Ira. Uh, he says, what would cause a signal to cut out intermittently while he's monitoring a repeater? Monitoring a repeater, he had a signal cut out intermittently. As, can you maybe shed some light on that, or is that not enough information? No, it's actually okay. And Ira, double check that you do not have a uh, scan turned on on your handheld that is a priority channel scan so it sounds like if it's cutting out every two or three seconds it's a programming uh, error on the handheld turn off the priority scan that samples an alternate channel causing the channel you're listening to ira to mysteriously quickly cut out try that perfect 
Thanks, Gordo. Excellent. And thank you for the lights, you guys. Thanks for shipping it to me, Bob. It's just so great. <laughs> and, and and one last thing, guys. Everything is, I'm going to be at the AES Superfest in Milwaukee, which is on April the 5th and the 6th, but Saturday is the big day. The 6th is full day starting at 8.30 a.m. I will be at the Ham Nation booth to meet and greet you all. And I'll have a special giveaway that day, a raffle. So come on down and, and, and say hi. That's in, at the Amateur Electric electronic supply in milwaukee wisconsin and that's all i have today and we'll see you next time on ham nation thanks for jumping in and joining us take care guys 73 okay good deal good report nice lights <laughs> <laughs> well now. we've had a, a great time here and um one thing also uh, i had a great time this past week uh doing a um a radio uh, a meeting in Westchester, New York. I, I do a lot of radio meetings, Gordo and George, all three of us, not together separately, but we're doing meetings, even doing some ham fest. Take advantage of Skype. Bring some activity to your club. The club is the life of this hobby. We've got to have clubs, but they need program, not just sit around and mm, look at everybody and be bored at the treasury report or the secretary's minutes, the last meeting that didn't happen. Do something. And, uh, of course, the cost is free. We don't have to travel there. It's really great. So uh, you want to take advantage to Skype. It's really super. And let's see, we're going to be on 7268. You got that fired up, Gordo? I think you do. Uh, we do. We're Mike on 7268 uh, shortly, and we'll be listening uh, 7268. Oh, they're talking already. So they're ready and for us. There they are. Live on Ustream by going to hamnation net and clicking on the live video there. So please join us <laughs> on 7.268 megahertz tonight for the post show net. And I will be back to you, Bob. To start the net. This is Whiskey okay. Tango Six. He's Hotel. been out here too. Listen to this. Wow. Come on, talk. There he is. <laughs> That's great. Nice big signal in the Midwest on 7268. So we'll have fun on there tonight. It's been fun, George. Very much congratulations on your award. Much deserved. And happy birthday to you, my friend. Well, thanks, Bob. And yeah, it was a great day today. Uh, my birthday, of course, and then uh, winning that award. So uh, just thank you to everybody who watches the videos and uh, gives us feedback on stuff and points us in the direction we need to be going. And also, Bob, we've got the Echo Link Net at Star Do Drop In Star or Node Number Three Five Five Eight Hundred. The D Star Net is on a hiatus again this week. And it should be returning next week with our friend Tom, uh, WB or KB4HQA, uh, taking that net over. So uh, hopefully that okay. will be back up next week as well. The 73. Great. Okay. Thanks, everybody. We'll be uh, looking for you on the bands. Get on the air, and maybe we'll see you on Skype at a club meeting. Uh, send us any uh, any kind of... Anything you want to know uh, about what we're doing here and how we can help your club, how we can help you better, send us an email. We're all very accessible. You have our email address, or most of us are uh, our calls at awrl.net. Thanks to Leo Laporte for the bandwidth and all of the things they do. And thank you very much, Brian and Karsten, to keep us going. And don't forget to look at the wiki. That's yeah. very important because you can see what's happening. Dan keeps that up to date. It's really cool. Each show has what happened on it. So if you want any notes, they're there. 7 3, everybody. This is K9 EID headed off to 40 meters. Bye bye for now.